Dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I hope that all of you are doing well. I am Dominic Platner, the ITTF High Performance Manager, and I am very happy and proud to warmly welcome all of you to our 20th ITTF High Performance and Development webinar with the topic Jörg Roskopf. Uh, before uh, going over to the introduction of our guest for today, I want to talk shortly about our webinar code for the Q&A. So to all the attendees, uh, please leave your questions in the Q&A section. We will try to answer as many as possible in the question and answer part of the webinar. So thank you very much for that. And uh, now over to the guest introduction. I would like to warmly welcome Jörg Roskopf from Germany. He is the 1989 World Doubles Champion, former European Champion in men's singles, doubles and team the silver medalist at the Barcelona 1992 Olympic Games in men's doubles, the bronze medalist at the Atlanta 1996 Olympic Games in men's singles. 1998, uh, he won the men's World Cup and he is currently the German national head coach of the men's team. So thank you very much for taking the time, Jörg. We are very much delighted to have you on board of our webinar for today. Thanks for the invitation. And Thank you. Last but not least, I warmly welcome our well-known ITTF High Performance Elite Coach Massimo Costantini. Pass over to you, Max, and I kindly ask you for your welcoming words and to kick off the interaction with our great guest. Thank you so much, Dominic. Welcome, everyone, and then thank you so much. Uh, Jörg Roskopf, uh, Rossi, we can, uh, we can call, is well known as Rossi. Impressive uh, um, background, uh, great player, great coach, uh, great friend. Uh, it's great uh, everywhere. So it's, uh, it's a really a great honor to have uh, Rossi today with us. It's a great opportunity, actually, for the attendees, uh, coaches, friends around the world uh, to listen from uh, his uh, wisdom let's say so many advice that uh, he has to he has to give to us so thanks again uh, rossi for uh, being with us thank you massimo <laughs> yeah I, I i go immediately with the question as dominic said uh great players so many things uh, you won uh, the world champion i was there i remember very well unforgettable i would say so how was your transition from a player to a coach? Um, yeah, it was uh, quite easy for me because uh, I tried to get in for the uh, Olympics 2008 in Beijing, uh, but I missed it because uh, there are some players that were really better than me in that moment. So Richard Brause, the coach in that moment, he uh, selects uh, another team, another players. So I was out of the team. Uh, I had to accept it and I uh, knew that my international career is quite over. So uh, um, yeah, I wanted to be al always like uh, to work as a coach. So in, th in that moment, I knew, okay, now the time is coming to, to get over to be a coach. Yeah? So from 2008 to 2010, I was the assistant coach from Richard Brause. Uh, he was the head coach of the German team. Uh, so in that moment, uh, yeah, I was happy to, to learn from him and uh, happy to be the, the second assistant coach for the national team. And uh, I was re responsible for the juniors in that moment. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was yeah, taking over a little bit for, for the for the younger players in, in the men's team. Um, yeah, a lot of fun for the, that moment. I learned a lot. And uh, Richard, he moved uh, to Austria, to the Werner Schlager Academy. And in that moment, yeah, a place was free. They couldn't find another coach. So they asked me and I said yes. So <laughs> that's uh, that was quite easy. Now, in, it was like this that... Uh, the federation they asked me if i if i want to do the job uh and i i said uh, i will ask all the players the key players in that moment um if they could uh, yeah imagine that that it should be right that i'm there for for the head coach 
So um, yeah, then I got uh, positive answers from players. And uh, so I said, okay, I want to do it. Uh, it's, it was a short period from 2010 to the Olympics in London to 2012. Um, a lot of pressure in Germany to work. So um, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's still fun to work with the players. So yeah, it was uh, you said that was uh, was quite easy. But do you think also there is a, a quick connection with uh, being a great coach and switch to the to being uh, sorry a great player and switch to to the coach? Or of course you have learned a lot. Uh, there was a lot of work from your side. But do you think this uh, transition it's easier when you have this kind of uh, condition? Okay, in in my career as a player, I I learned a lot from the coach, and I always had the the, the, the goal to work as a coach. So I was always in 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 the position that I was speaking a lot with my coach in that that moment. I was always involved in 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 the draws for the tournaments or selection for for players. So uh, here, for example, in Düsseldorf, I was always uh, I knew what was going on. I, I knew what kind of player they want to 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 buy i knew what kind of uh, selection for the team or what kind of draw they want to do so i was in young age i was already listening a lot to 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 the coach because i knew i want to be coach so i think it's not important to be a a, a good player and then you will be a good coach i think it's uh, totally different because uh, you have to work hard as a coach because it's it's uh, yeah, it's a totally different job as a player. So it's, it's, more, it's, it's more an attitude that you have to have uh, since the uh, beginning, you know, show interest, uh, learning, and then, yeah, uh, yeah that's, uh, I, I, I get it, I get it. Dominic, I think you have uh, some, uh, yeah, we have more questions for, uh, for uh, Rossi, but uh, Dominic, it's your time. Thank you, Massimo. Yeah, Rossi, we are all the time uh, just talking about the daily routines of the players and the match day habits. But how does a usual day of a Jörg Roskopf in a tournament look like? Okay, um, yeah, it's quite, <laughs> quite a difference if the tournament is really, really important, the pressure is high, uh, if you are there as a coach for single players or you are there in a team event. I think this is a big difference because in, if you are there with a team in the team event, World Champions, European Champions, Olympics, then you are doing nearly everything together with a team because you want to, to work as a team and you are one part of the team. And it's totally different if you work, for example, for the um, single World Championships because then you have five, six players different timetables, uh, different players. So then you have to work quite in the other way, yeah? because then you have to work really like one-to-one -to, -one to your uh, player. But my routine is, of course, always that I have to do something in the morning because I'm the whole day in the hall. Um, so I have to do really early in the morning something for myself. So I go out running or I go to the gym and uh, do something for me because I need to have fresh air because I know Afterwards, I'm eight, 10, 12 uh, hours in the hall because to work as a coach is not like this, to work as a player. Player is the match. Now, best of seven with two 11, sometimes it's four zero, then it's maybe 40 minutes, 50 minutes, little preparation. So you are two hours, you have to do something as a player, but for coach, next player is coming and the next player is coming. So you are from the morning from nine, Till 10 in the evening, you are in the hall, and that's a lot, a lot to do. And that's why I wake up very early to do something for my side, to uh, yeah, to be fresh in the head because you need really a lot of power as a coach. Yeah, great to hear that you are caring about your body, and this is for sure very important, as you mentioned. And I do have one more question for you, Rossi. We all do know that players have role models. Um, and you mentioned before that uh, your coach was all the time very important for you. You had all the time a talk uh, with him about uh, what is important in, in coaching already when you were young. 
Uh, who was your role model as a coach, Jose? I have to say that I'm, I had the pleasure that I was working always with great coaches together. Since I started to play table tennis, I started when I was five years old. I worked together with uh, Horst Heckwolf in my club. He was later on, he was coach uh, in the region there. Uh, then I went on to work with uh, Helmut Hampel, coach from Timo Boll, Patrick Franziska, from me. So um, I was happy to work with him together. Then I went on to work with Mario Amesic very early in uh, uh, Düsseldorf, together with coaches from the national teams. Yeah, in that moment, Klaus Schmittinger, Eva Jela, they were all responsible for me. Uh, Slatko Chardas, he's he was or is still a great tactic coach. He was not the best coach in the hall, as to give you uh, the, the the exercises, but he was great as a tactic uh, coach behind the bench and uh, there he was great for, learned a lot from him. But uh, I mostly learned, uh, for example, a lot from, from Mario Amesic because I was there in Dusseldorf when I was 16 years old. And he so he, he, he took over a long period uh, as, as my coach and uh, I learned a lot from him. Uh, so in that moment, I, yeah, I want to know also what he's going on and what he's thinking about the players and thinking about a club and like this. So um, he was quite important for me. Glenn Erst was very important because he was new in Germany as a foreign coach uh, in that period. Uh, we were, had a lot of success with Istvan Korpa, with Klaus Schmittinger, but uh, we had to do something new in Germany. And in that moment, Glenn Erst, Swedish coach, came in and uh, had some new ideas. And uh, these ideas were really great. Uh, we took more time in the gym. We took more physical exercises and uh, we learned more about table tennis and tactics. So this was also for me very important. Okay, now in the moment, uh, um, yeah, I work together with my former coach, Helmut Hampel, here in Dusseldorf in the center. And uh, so I'm really glad to work with so many, I forgot for sure now, some Coach, but I, I'm really glad to work with uh, the best coaches and uh, that's why I became a great player and uh, I think that's uh, also important for me now as a coach. Thank you for giving us these interesting insights uh, related to your coaching package, I would say. And uh, I would like to pass over to you, Max, for the next question. So you grew up in the, in the, in the, in the high knowledge uh, uh, environment, you know, so you have mentioned so many coaches, uh, great coaches, I know all of them, and then I remember such great results from uh, from Germany, from you guys, and keep having results, so uh, the legacy of those coaches uh, continue with, uh, with you with great results. So, you said before that uh, <clears throat> the attitude of being a coach is very important, but what what are the qualities a coach should have, in your opinion? What are the main things that can make the difference? Okay, behind the knowledge, of course, knowledge is important. Yeah. What yeah. do you think? I think uh, it's really important to listen to the players. I think that's the most important because all the players, they are thinking they are the greatest. And uh, so they know <laughs> a lot. Uh, so you listen to them and then... Um, yeah, you keep in the in the in the in the months and the years what you're working with them. Um, yeah, with what kind of players you're working together because they're all different. Yeah, that's really unbelievable. That uh, all my let's say I'm responsible for the for the men's team, but I'm responsible as well a little for the juniors and for the cadets or for the whole men's teams. Um, and it's really uh, yeah important to listen to all of the players because they are all important and. You cannot say, okay, at the moment, one player is strong. He's in front of the other, but don't forget the other ones because they all work hard. And uh, maybe one player, he has not the talent like, let's say, Timo Boll, who comes up very quick uh, to his positions. When he was 14, he played in the Bundesliga. Uh, so another player, he needs, he needs more time. So he needs more to listen to, to speak with him. And I think that's really quite important and it's really important to stay focused for a long period 
to uh, work with the player because it's not like this that they, that they come so quick up to the top level. So it needs time. So give them time, but speak with really goals in the future. Yeah, not to speak about goals, uh, let's say in the next half year or in a year. So let's say really big goals, what you want to, to, to work with the players for really on the highest level, on the, really on the peak of the mountain. Yeah. What they, let's say world champion or Olympic champion or European champion, really like that they are dreaming about the, the big things. Yeah. Because not that they are, let's say you speak about to be Italian champion, German champion, then you become Italian champion. And then, okay, what's, what's going on now? Because I, I reach my, my, my goals. Yeah. So I think it's really important to, to, to work really with the player as a human being and as a really like a top player. And, uh, yeah, the most important for, for, for coach and the player is to get the right tactic and the right technique. Technique is really important. So you have to work a lot on the technique. That's why the, the Asian players, they are really in front of the Europeans, for example, because they work a lot on, on the technique when they start with five, six years old or three or four, uh, four or five years old. They work a lot on the technique and they stay really a lot and long times on the forehand, on the backhand and not to go on because like in Europe, all the players, they want to work then, okay, what is with side spin? What is with my service? What is with this? Stay really focused on the, on the uh, technique because it's really, really important to have a, a strong and a safe and a stable technique. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, but uh, yes, I mean, uh, humble, a good listener, a good, uh, I mean, maybe before following the, 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 the coach's dream, following the player's dream, you know, to, to help them to achieve their, right. uh, their, uh, right. their dream. So it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely great. Uh, coaching and uh, advising, you know, okay, the, the, the rule changed uh, several years ago, but still the, the topic quite uh, actual. Um, what, what do you think is the, is the best way to, to coach during the match? There are coaches, you know, they talk every, every, every ball, every, every rally. They try to guide, you know, like a remote control the players. Uh, other they don't say anything they just wait uh, the 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 end of the bench sometimes uh, sometimes uh, you 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 don't have even time in one minute to explain what you want to explain so well, what what is your advice uh, in this uh, in this case okay i think the coaching start already in the practice so in the in the the the, the weeks before yeah you you speak a lot with a, with a player uh, about uh, the, the the tactics, about uh, the, the the teams you you uh, play in the world championships again in the group system, or uh, then you go on uh, um, with the players to speak a lot about uh, the tactics. But during the match, uh, but it's it's just my opinion because I know my players now. Yeah, if I would say, for example, a, a lot to Timo Boll, he would say, okay, that's it. It's it is, is really too much for me. Uh, just give me one or two or twice and that's, and that's everything. Uh, so uh, with some players, you have to speak a little bit more, but the most important is you have just one minute. Yeah. So a minute is really quite, quite fast. Yeah. So the players, they come back to the bench. They are really like, okay, it doesn't matter if they, they, they won the set or they lost the set. Yeah. But they are like this, that they are really a lot of tension and they, they have so much power in this, this, this moment. So calm them a little down that they can listen to you. Uh, so that's really important that there is not too much stress and hectic in. So first for me is always to calm them down and uh, then give them one, two or twice, listen to them. To some players I have to listen. Let's say uh, Tim, uh, Timo Ball is a player, he don't speak too much. So for Dimitri Ovchov, he speaks a lot. So I let him speak and then I give him uh, my opinions and then we come to uh, advice for one or two points. What is really important, yeah. And then you, the last you, seconds, you. and the last seconds of the, the the one minute is that you have to really give them power and give them uh, the strength and give them the, the 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 feeling that if they start with the service or with the return, they are better than the other players. So give them really uh, 
the feeling that they will win the set, that, that they are strong, that they are well prepared. So um, the motivation, the last seconds, it's quite uh, important. Um, yeah, and that's that's it. Like like three section. Yeah, calm them down, give them the advice, and push them for the next set. I think that's uh, my uh, opinion of being coach. But you have so many, as you said, you have so many uh, um, feelings as a coach. But sometimes, yeah, it's changed because uh, there is too much stress in. So um, one is injured, and you speak 50 seconds about the injury and. So there are so many things what could happen, and I think then it's really important that the coach he know what is going on. So uh, for me, because I know nearly everything as a as a uh, as a player, so I I think I can react on all the things what could be possible in this one yeah. minute, and this is that makes me a little bit more stressless. So I'm I'm not so much in stress if I'm a coach because for me the most important I always tell to my players you are well prepared if you are well prepared relax and Do it. be happy to be a player be happy to be in the semi-final or in the final that's the greatest what you can get so don't be too stressful huh? so yeah absolutely uh, make them make them calm draw their attention uh, send some uh, some uh, some good uh, you know motivation uh, words uh, for them and uh, come up to a common <laughs> let's say agreement in what uh, what uh, what to do next yes then next uh, actually is for uh, for dominic i guess Thank you very much, Massimo. And yeah, now we are a little bit changing uh, from the adult uh, topic to the to the young talents, Rossi. And as you mentioned before, you also worked with uh, young players before. So regarding the talent, uh, what is the characteristic that impress you the most? I mean, what tells you, oh, that player will be a real great champion? Okay, for, for this, really, I have not so much to say because I'm not 100% involved in this everything. So I'm looking around, but um, let's say Helmut Hampel, he, he's working for 40 years. Eva Jela working for years with cadets, with juniors. So they know and they see a lot uh, uh, what is going on with the player, how it will be in the future. So... Um, I was working not always 100% with cadet and junior, so I'm really like in the top level. But uh, I always, if I get this uh, question, I would I always answer, I'm uh, I'm really like a, an outsider because uh, I I see a lot and I I want to work with them in the future. But uh, right now I have not the ability to say uh, what is the the most important. As I said before, the most important is. Talent for me is to work hard. That's that's my point of a talent. In the end, if you work hard, you can reach a top level. To become a, a really, really top player, you need to have something special. And the special is that you have to understand table tennis. So you are really like you are in to be uh, like like you are thinking about like a coach or a player or a. Uh, so many things around what is really important for the top players. Let's say we speak about top 10, top 5 in the world ranking. There are just players, they, okay, they are working hard, but they understand table tennis. They know what is going on. And that's quite important. But for the cadets, for the talents who started table tennis, the most important is stay long on the technique, work hard on this, because if you reach the top and you have some weakness in your match, in your game, then you will be not one of the top players. Let's say you have to work hard on these weaknesses, otherwise it will be really, really a big problem. Let's say um, some Japanese players, uh, um, yeah, they had weaknesses, but they start so early, so they, they, they work so early on their weaknesses that they improve a lot and they come to the top level as a player who really worked really, really hard in the in the in the future, and that's in the in the past, and that's important to work hard and stay focused on on long terms. 
Okay, so Dominic, it's very much your can I jump on yeah, of Dominic, course, of can course. I jump on this? Because I have an, uh, something uh, regarding this uh, talent, uh, sorry. Uh, but uh, I, I mean, um, yes, I understood that uh, you, you, you work uh, with the top level, but thinking about the talents, what, what do you think they need to, to, to be uh, great champions? Talents there are everywhere, I believe. What, what do you think they need? From, from your opinion, let's say that you are on the, on the top, uh, watching, observing, what do you think they need? Okay, as I said, uh, to, to work hard, to understand table tennis and to live like a table tennis professional player from the, from the, from the beginning. So it means you practice twice a week, but twice a week your practice should be 100%. So uh, I think then you improve, then you get more, and you practice three times, four times a week, twice a day. So always to, 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 to uh, enter the hall, um, it's not that easy for the cadet to enter a hall and to know what, what I want to practice. But to, to uh, work more on this, okay, what was I, I want to improve because I spoke with my coach. I want to improve my forehand. Okay, what is the, the, the key, what, what I want to improve? Do video analysis. Yeah, it's very important for the, for the kids to do video analysis because it's not easy for the cadet. If I, if I, for example, will tell, uh, uh, Benedict Duda or, or Timo Boll uh, play more with wrist, they know what it means to play more with wrist because they, they are playing table tennis for, for, for years, for decades. But for kids, with 10 years to say, okay, play more with wrist, it's not that easy. So it's better to show them on, on, on a video, uh, to show them in slow motion, uh, what should be the, it, there are, there are not the perfect uh, technique. You will not have the perfect technique because then you have um, always work on it. Yeah, but to show them, I think it's uh, it's really important to 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 speak with the the, the cadet. I told you before, it's a lot to speak with them, to show them a lot, to to be positive with them because they are not like these the kids that they are focused for 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 an hour or two hours. So it's very difficult for them. But stay always focused. Stay behind them. For example, we have not in Europe that, that in that position that we have so many coaches who could work like say one to one uh, with with a player like in Asia. In Asia, they they have more the the the, the uh, feeling and um, that maybe two players, one coach. So then you are really like 100% in this position to work always with with uh, with a player. In Europe, it's like this. You have sometimes 20 cadets. And you work with one, two, or three coaches, so it's not that easy. But show the, the the cadets, the kids, that you are really in, that you are focused, that they should be focused, but uh, give them time to improve their their techniques. So make make them understand, make them learning. Actually, you know something right. that they can right. then uh, uh, take and and bring uh, uh, along their career. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because, if, because if they cannot understand it they will not uh, learn it because they have to understand it. Otherwise, you just speak to to to, to wall, yeah? Yeah, and then become uh, becomes a weakness that uh, we'll, uh, we'll face later on. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely great, Rossi. Um, yeah, the, talking again, the, the relationship between uh, players and coaches, you have already said a few things. Uh, but this is another part that uh, can be interested for our uh, uh, attendees. What do you think is the key to get the trust from players? What is your what what the coach should uh, should possess to have uh, is a charisma, is a knowledge, is a communication? What is the the key that you get the trust? I think. It's like this that you have to 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 see the the player, as I told you before, as as really as a human being. Yeah, he has a family. He has uh, something beside table tennis. So I think everything together is very important for the player. And if you if you are interested in everything, yeah, so the player knows, okay, he's and he's really interested in me and in my game, but also in everything around because everything around is important because. Uh, it could be so many things around what can disturb uh, 
the communication between coach and players and the communication between the player and then afterwards in the match because he could be more stressful because something happened home or uh, he's he's not in the best shape or like this. So this is quite important. And then you get uh, also the trust, but it's also important that you as a coach work really hard that they know if if I'm in the hall, I have to show them that I am with 100% in the hall, that I'm not somewhere with my mind, let's say, I don't know, I have, I have to talk about a new contract, or I have to speak about with them, or what I will do in the afternoon. No, be concentrate, yeah? It's good to, to switch off the, the cell phone, or to, to really like to work 100% uh, with, with the players for this two hours. And then afterwards, you can be relaxed a little, but as a player, you go home, you really relax. But as a coach, you cannot relax because you have to prepare the next training session. So that's really, really tough because the days in, for example, now I'm the training camp, they are really tough and the players know it, that the days are more tough than uh, as the, the, the days for, for a player. But I'm, I'm not like this that I will tell the players, oh, it was tough and it was hard and oh, I'm tired like this. No, I'm, I'm not tired. I want to work because that's my dream to be a coach. Yeah. So I, I, they know that I am, I am really honored to work with this kind of players. It doesn't matter if it's Timo Boll, Dimitri Ovcharov, or is it number 15 in my, in my team? I'm honored to work all with them because they are all great players and they give 100%. So I have to give 100%. And I, and my, my assistant coach, they have to give 100%. Uh, so uh, for me, for my team, I have to know that all of them, they have to give 100%. If someone, they are working not hard enough because they are, something is going on, then it's better to go out of the hall, take your holiday, take your time, be, be focused and then come back to the hall. Huh? So you have to be the first uh, great example for them, you know, to, to, to okay, when, was, you are, when you are I in the was, hall to work hard is a, is a strong message, of course. Yeah, I was as a player, I was always the first player in the hall, always. Often I was the last out of the hall, but often or nearly always the first in the hall. And as I'm coach, I'm the same. I'm the first in the hall. I build up the hall. I, I'm prepared with my with my uh, assistant coach, we are prepared for this training session. So they know, they arrive, and they know, okay, that the coach, they are in focus, they are in the tunnel, so we have to get ready. So I, I want to know that my players, they are ready for this training session. So they know what we want to practice, what we want to, to, to learn, and uh, in the end, we can speak about it. But for these two hours, uh, they really have to be a focus on this. So uh, for me, it's important that the players, they are not, <laughs> they are not come to the hall with the breakfast in the, in the mouse and then, okay, uh, what we do now, but I'm not well prepared. So then it's better to stay home. So they have to be really well prepared and then we can work hard. And that's, I think, the most important right now why, for example, Europe is not in the top because not so many players, they are, they are well prepared to get really 100% from these two hours. And that's, I'm delighted that there are now more and more coaches from the young generation, from my generation, to work as a coach, because they know that this is, this is really, really important. Yeah? Great, great advice, unbelievable. Good, good, thank you so much. Back to you, Dominic. Thank you, Massimo. And uh, also, as you mentioned uh, before, yeah, of course, it's very important to be with the players, that they feel that you are with them, that you give the 100%, as you mentioned. Um, and when somebody of the attendees uh, attended a, a world tour, you know, or maybe world championships or whatever, and uh, took a look in the practice hall, then they also maybe could see a Jörg Roskopf practicing with Timo Paul, Dima Ovcharov, whoever. So how much importance would you give to play one-to-one -one with your players, even if they are super strong like your players? Okay, I think in this moment, uh, if you enter the practice hall, then for sure they were looking for 
another players, but they couldn't find one, so they have to take me. So <laughs> that's why they have to take the weak, the weakest one. <laughs> Uh, no, I think it's. I think that this is not important. I think it's uh, real like this. That uh, okay. I, I I still I can play a little bit with the players, but uh, from the beginning when I work as a coach in 2010, I told to the players I'm not anymore the player because I I I, I play double with Timo Ball. I'm in the team with with Dimitri Ovchov. I was in the team with uh, Bastian Steger. So they know me as a player and then as a coach. So I said before. Okay, I'm not anymore your the player, so I'm really like your your chief. I'm the coach. I have to take responsibility because I have a contract uh, in my federation, so we want to have success. So then they know that I am not anymore a player. So that's why I also not anymore in the club system in Germany. I think I could play somewhere uh, third division, fourth division in Germany, but I don't want to play anymore because. Uh, they, they have to see me as a coach, not as a player. So uh, if it's like this, that I have to practice with someone, then it's really like this, that uh, uh, maybe we do some small things, or uh, in this moment, we are playing table tennis, or they are playing, but we speak a lot about the tactics in, di in that moment. So uh, this is like to calm down a little bit the player, to speak with him. This is really like the, the last... Uh, hour of a match or something. It's not like this that I'm practice with them, for example, here in the training camp. I will never practice with them in the training camp because we have great players, so I am out of this. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, pass over to you, Max. Yeah, um, getting in in the match, uh, I mean, uh, many many say winning the, the first game means to, uh, you know, to have a, a significant advantage over the opponent. What, what do you think is the most crucial moment of the match? Is, uh, the most, is to the win most crucial? <laughs> oh, it's all, most... it's all important, of course, but, you know, it's... The, the most important... <laughs> the most important to get the last point. This is the most important. <laughs> That's very true. Very true. I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> because no, winning think... is much better than losing. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's really like this. That it's really important. But uh, but you can learn a lot from the from from to lose a match. You can learn really a lot. So uh, I think it doesn't matter so much for me because. Uh, for me, as a as a coach, I have to see if if the if the player is really in the game and it's going really really fast now with the new system till eleven. It's going really fast. So if you know, okay, you lose eleven nine, but you see the player is in full focus. The player is with his tactic there. He knows what to do. So it doesn't matter because they are all uh, well prepared and they know that it's really it's a long term. So you have to play one more set, one more set. Yeah. So it's now it's much shorter so you have to prepare really really well till 21 with best of five you had more time to work uh, on your service skills because you had five service so you can work on it yeah? uh, right now it's more stressful yeah but you have to uh, be there to arrive in the in the match really with full concentration good preparation and then everything could be okay but uh, it's not important to to win the first set. It's good to win the first set, the second, the third, and the fourth, then you are the winner. But uh, <laughs> stay stay relaxed if you lose the first. Don't show too many emotions to the opponent if you lose a set, because it's just a set. So it's really like this: if you lose the whole match, the opponent was better. Agree it, work more, work more hard, and the next time you will beat him. Yeah, well, uh, I was asking this because uh, I, I, okay, I, I've, I've observed uh, so many matches, and uh, uh, yes, they, the players they feel more confidence, of course, when you, when you win the first, uh, you have a better, uh, you know, different uh, attitude. But sometimes I've seen that uh, um, leading, for example, I give you an example, leading ten eight uh, in a, in a game, and with the opponents serve, you know that feel that, uh, ah, okay, I have two game points or even two match points, but actually with the opponent serve is not really like that. So many things that uh, that is the, is, the, is the moment where they feel maybe 
you know, the, the, the highest pressure. I don't know. What, 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 do you, what do you think? It's a very particular time, right, that, that thing. Yeah, but, <clears throat> but it's really like this that you have to understand the players. Like some players, for them, it's really important to, to win the first set that you see that take really like very early a time out because they want to win the set. It'll, as you said, 10-8, let's say it's 10-6, then it goes on 10-7, 10-8. So, okay, you go to the towel, but you can take again the time out. So, because I want to win this set. So it's very important for some players to win the first set, as you said, to have a better feeling for the, for the, for the game. The other players, they are thinking about, okay, I keep my time out because if it will goes to the six or the sevens, yeah, so I need my timeout. So I think it's a uh, quite uh, big difference between the players. Uh, so um, let's say also it's quite a big difference if you play against the player a lot, you won a lot against the player, you have a lot of confidence against the player, so you can accept to lose the first day because you have, let's say, a statistic of 80-20, uh, and uh, so let's say, okay, it's no problem for me because I, I, I win because I have so much self-confidence uh, uh, against this player. Let's say if I would lose five times against you, I had 10-7, I miss my serve, then I would say, okay, now I would take the timeout because I need this set because the last five times I lost against you. So this is quite important to, to change then something. And uh, let's say uh, there are really the players really, really different. And this is for a player and for, for uh, let's say, for, for a coach, very important to know, to understand the player. Because if I, for example, would stand up, time out, then the player would say, okay, no, no, not time out now at the moment. I will need it later on. Yeah. I'm fine. So, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. So, so this, you have to know the reaction, how the player is feeling. So this is really important. This is what I said before. You have to get really 100% in the in the in the player. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree, agree, agree. Uh, yes, Dominic, uh, it's your question next. Uh, was you you mentioned, uh, and we all are aware that you are working with the real real top players, especially of Europe. We can say, you know, um, what 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 or how which emotions. Uh, do arose in you when you are working with them? How is it to, to manage this team, to manage them? To manage a team, you mean? To manage yeah. those top players, your top players. Yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not a big pr uh, problem to manage the top players because, uh, yeah, you work with them every day, so <laughs> you know them, you know how they uh, want to be prepared. And it's really like this, it's, it's much easier to work with a team in a team event because then you're really doing everything together with the team. And you, you have to show them that uh, it's really important to do everything for the team because you win together and you lose together with the team. So this is really important. So it makes, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's easier for me because as, as a player, I like to 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 play with a team, to win with a team. Uh, this was always my targets. Yeah, uh, um, as a player alone, okay, you have your 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 goals, your aims, but as a team, it's really it's 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 nice to to win with a team. Yeah, because you share your, your moments with players, with coach, with everyone, with the nations. Yeah, um, and so in that moment, uh, you prepare really like a team. You you work for weeks, for months, for years together with a team. Uh, for example, for the next uh, World Championships or Olympics, yeah, you, you know maybe a little your your team, your selection of your team, yeah, and uh, you want to bring them in in the team. And then if you select your team, then you work really like hard with the team. Yeah, so you do training camps together. You do the the, the managing. The whole day is really like full of. Uh, uh, the small things, what is really important. So uh, to go on together with the breakfast, yeah? to go on to the practice hall. It's not always like this that uh, all my players, they go to the practice because Timo Ball is not practicing in the morning if you play in the afternoon. Yeah? But uh, Dimitrovchov, he, he needs to practice in, in, in the morning. So, But this is not a problem is if the team is working together. Because if I would say to Timo Ball, but you have to practice in the morning, he will he would not play well in the even in the evening 
because he's not he's not like this because he's not 100% behind them and he has to be really like in full focus yeah and so that's really important that all the players are thinking they are one part and the important part of this team. Yeah. So for you as the ho as the head coach, the manager of the team, I would say this uh, team spirit, the, the teamwork arouses the, the, the most emotions in you, yeah? Right? Yeah. Okay. Of course, Thank of you. course. Uh, that it's, it's all important because the team Yeah, as I said before, wins together and loses together. And this is important. They have to understand this. This, If one player is losing, okay, the next one is jumping in. And it's not like this. For example, I select Timo Boll as my, let's say, best player. And he loses first match. Okay, it doesn't matter. Next one is in. Yeah? So you have to prepare them for all of these things. Yeah? Thank you. Okay, all, all, all you have a Chinese teams. And there it doesn't matter who is jumping in because... They are really, really strong, but in one moment we will catch them. Yeah. <laughs> Over to you, Max. Yeah, uh, yeah. We know that the top players they are mature, they are very experienced player. Um, are they more uh, inclined for for your experience, but not only for your players, but watching also uh, other players? I, I guess you watch and you observe, you analyze other players. Uh, are they more inclined to risk during the match, or uh, or having a standardized uh, attitude during the match? What, what what do you think? The risk can be a solution for the for the match uh, or uh, you just go you know in a sort of a keep going and then we will see how the the things uh, will uh, will develop okay for sure to keep going it's always very important yeah it's it's over till it's over that's really important yeah so uh keep on fighting till the last point yeah this is this is the this is the message of but in all kind of sport in in the whole life yeah? keep on fighting till the end yeah? but uh yeah it's it doesn't i think it's uh, quite uh yeah depends on what kind of player you have yeah? let's say hopefully gassian in the former world champion he had a high risk in his match i had a high risk in my match but i was used to have risk in my match so i was For me, it was not a big problem to 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 miss my backhand or to miss a, a, a long serve. It was not my problem. For example, the Swedish person, Waldner, Appelgren, they were quite safe in their match. So they start the match quite safe. They had their tactic, but they, they started to develop the whole set, the whole points, the whole match. So uh, we had more risk in. So we were, because we had not this talent to to have, let's say, Uh, this passive game, passive game, the Swedish, they were perfect, like to, to push sometimes or just block and bring the ball in and just play the rally, let the opponent do the mistake. Yeah. So we had always high risk, but, uh, I think it's now in the moment with, with, with the, uh, change of rules and with the new ball, uh, with the new rubbers, um, I think it's okay to to bring the ball in and let the opponent play and let the opponent do their mistakes. Give them, uh, yeah, give them uh, goals, give them uh, uh, skills what they have to learn with. Because uh, uh, it's not like this that you push the, the limits and the risks so high that the opponent's thinking, okay, I just push because the other one is is really like a high roller. Yeah? It's not like this. Yes, yeah? just. Start, I think, with uh, with with uh, um, players who have really like um, to know what they want to play from the tactic side, but to know also what they are what they are thinking about what is going on in the match. So it's not like this: you come in the match and you jump in and you are uh, you you start with long service, but you're not prepared for the long service because you know if you do long service, it comes a fast ball back. So you can start with a long service, but Bring up your racket and be ready for the rally. So this is quite important to play more this this chess. Yeah, so this is important. If I do serve there, the return mostly comes there. If I do long service, I know the fast ball is coming. If I push, you know a spin is there. If I flick, a fast ball is coming. So this is quite important to be ready for this part. Great, great. 
I think we have a couple of more questions, Dominic. Uh, next is for you, and then maybe we still have uh, time because we know that uh, Rossi has to uh, uh, go as a first getting in the in the venue before the players. <laughs> so That's we don't it. want to <laughs> we don't want to keep you longer. So Dominic, uh, uh, go ahead. Thank you, Massimo. Uh, very true. And uh, Rossi, you mentioned it before. Um, you emphasized it. I mean, uh, as a coach, to be a coach is a real, you know, whole day job. Yeah. So there are so many different tasks you have to do out of the practice in the hall. Uh, but beside the regular work, what 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 should a coach do to improve his or her knowledge or the abilities what is your opinion about this to listen a lot to other coaches to listen a lot to specialized persons who are responsible for athletics to uh, yeah someone who is really let's say um, richard browser yet great surfer as a player so he could show the, the the players his surf and speak about the surf or uh, let's say to to work with, as I said, with athletic coach, uh, to listen to him, to ask him what is what is going on, because I want to make my players quicker. What what we can do? So I think this is quite important. I'm I'm not I was not working as an athletic coach. I have not the, this this knowledge as an athletic coach. So I have I have to trust them, and I have a team around our team, and I'm glad to have a team around. Yeah, it's not. Uh, that I'm alone there. I have, I have my assistant coach, I have my uh, multi balls trainer, I have my athletic coach, I have my, my mental coach. There are so many who are working together. So that's why when you enter the, the, the training center in Dusseldorf, there are pictures on the wall from the whole team. It's not only from, from the team who won the medal in the Olympics. There is a picture from the whole team around what was responsible for the for the medal in the Olympics. And that's why I'm always pissed uh, in the Olympics that just three players, they get the medal uh, in the Olympics and not the fourth player, because he's important, he's in the team, and not the coach. So this is a message for the coach, and I cannot understand it. I'm always, uh, yeah, really, as, as I said, I'm pissed, because for a coach, it's always like this, you are on the team, and then in the end, you won a medal and you are not on the podium. So that I, this I cannot understand. This is also, let's say, uh, so important for the, for the coach all around the world to work as a coach. If they want to work as a coach and they see the top in the Olympics, okay, there are just three players, but where's the coach? Where's the fourth player? So this is a message what is terrible for, for our job, for our uh, coaches. Because we need a lot of coach. We need that the players, we have to bring them in the hall. We have to, 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 to show them how is table tennis. We have to, to, to motivate them. We have to listen to them. We have to, that, that they love table tennis because they have to love table tennis. And, and this message is really terrible messages. And we have to work on this. And we have to work that also the coach, they are in the team. It's, it's, for example, in soccer, if there is an interview in soccer, the interview is often with the coach and then with the player, but in table tennis, the interview is always with a player and the coaches, they are not announced in the hall. They are, they are not there. They are just, we are walking in, in the hall. The hall is dark. The coach are there. And then suddenly, okay, the coach is sitting there at the bench. But okay, this is the wrong message. What, what the federation, yeah, I, I, I said also to the ITTF, this is a what, uh, a wrong message. What we send out to the world. That the coach, they are, they make the coach so small. For me, it's no problem because I was good player, coach. I'm okay, so I'm I'm happy with my life. So I can I can stop tomorrow. I have no problem to stop tomorrow. But for for the for the players and for, for the coach who wants to start, they need a message, and the message is terrible. What we send out. Okay. Thank you for your opinion. And uh, pass over to you, Max. 
Absolutely true. I mean, it's, uh, it's absolutely important that the coach has the role that uh, deserves, you know, because it's behind. And it's also important that the staff, as you said, you know, working with you and with the players daily, you know, they, 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 they have to have uh, the right uh, recognition. So I, I totally agree with Rosie. I have one more uh, last uh, question. Um, you've been, uh, uh, I mean, players during the 80s uh, and then uh, played 90s, 2000 coach and that. What do you think is the biggest change for a daily, daily work uh, of a coach in consideration of material, schedule, fitness? Uh, it's, it's always to have a, a good staff that work around you, or a, or a, what, what 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 is the change? Do you think? I think I think it's really important to have a, to have really like a big team or working together. You have to trust in this team. I think it's quite important because you you cannot know everything. Yeah, so uh, you have to listen to them. But uh, it's really like small things. What is really important to become a good player yeah, and a good coach. So. Uh, uh, so it's 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 really important that you trust 100% in your in your coach in your uh, special coaches the special team is really important yeah so um, let's say I'm I'm really glad to have a, a really good assistant coach special team around so uh, we have to think about so many things because so many things has changed in the past yeah the the ball the rubbers the the physical uh, uh, preparation of the players yeah so. Um, we have to work a lot, and uh, the most important is to work in the hall. This is, in the end, it's the most important. You have to work hard, and this is the sentence, what we all, the message, what we all have to send out, to work hard in the hall, and uh, in the end, then, uh, yeah, a lot of practice will deserve it. Yeah. It was wonderful, wonderful chat with you, uh, Rossi. I return the mic to Dominic for a closing and uh, back to you, Dominic. Thank you. A very short summary from my side. Uh, sort of this, the transition from a player to a coach was for him quite easy. He wanted to become a coach. His goal was very clear. And he learned a lot from his coaches. He had listened to them already when he was young, having in mind to be a coach in the future. It's important for him to work with the players and to see them as a human being. The technique is very crucial and one of the most important points to work on for him. And related the coaching issue, uh, it starts for Rossi already a, a few weeks prior to the tournament. So during the match, his opinion is to be flexible and adapt to the needs of the player. So calm them down, give them the advice, and last but not least, push them to the peak performance. He also emphasized that he is quite relaxed and stressless as a coach because as a former very, very successful top player, uh, he knows the different situations and knows how they are feeling, you know. And regarding the young and talented players, um, you should work with the young players in a way to raise them in a professional way, use videos, electronic devices, and so on, to make them un to understand, you know, make them understand the things much easier. Because many of them, when they see it, they understand it much better than, rather than, you know, having a verbal instruction. Show the players that uh, you are 100% with them in the hall. Be the first in the hall, as Rossi mentioned. Prepare everything for them. Be a chief and take responsibility. And last but not least, he emphasized to be open-minded and listen to other coaches also from other fields. Dear Rossi, we want to thank you very much for sharing your knowledge, experience, your thoughts, expertise, and for giving us so many interesting insights into your life as a player and nowadays as a coach. So, vielen Dank, Rossi. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Massimo. Great to be. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you for your interest and attendance. And I am looking forward to our next webinar. The topic will be para table tennis integration in the member associations, which will be held on the 24th September. That's all from my side for today and pass over to you, Max, and I kindly ask you for your closing words.
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rossi. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, I mean, it was great. It was unbelievable. Great. Uh, I hope the, all the attendees have enjoyed this, uh, this uh, talk with Rossi. Uh, we know that uh, he has to go. I would, I would love to have him uh, longer uh, for uh, all night long to talk about the table tennis and the stories behind. So thank you very much again. As uh, IDTF, uh, as Massimo, as uh, TT family, we wish you all the best uh, back to the venue and uh, uh, best regards to the team and uh, the best of luck uh, for the future. Thank you very much, Rossi. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. All the best. Bye-bye.